Boom. Welcome. Welcome, welcome back. Peace and blessings to everyone. Hope you're enjoying that powerful, powerful spiritual music composed by our guest Raul Nefa Amen, the first, and featuring one of the powerful cow, the mantras, the words of power that's featured in our course. On Eleven laws, health, wealth, and success. Just one of the very powerful chanters we have, Shechem Haringala Maatikum, heads up the southwest region of the Asar Set Society. Such a powerful piece. So I hope you're doing well. I want to welcome you to Comedic Legacy. This is the digital publishing arm of the Asar Set Society. My name is M. Tehuti Kamo. I serve as one of the Orwas in the Osar Oset Society, the nation's largest international, actually, uh, oldest society based on the teachings of ancient Comedic spirituality. And tonight we have a powerful subject. We're gonna be hearing from the founder of the Osara Set Society, the prolific internationally acclaimed author and authority on comedic spirituality, the author of the Meduna Tear seven volume set, as well as over 23 or four other books uh, written on the subject of our ancient spirituality as well as, well as health uh, family relationships, and so on. And um, the subject tonight is, is mantras, is words of power, uh, which is such an important, uh, powerful part of your spiritual practice. Uh, but before we get into that, I just want to welcome those of you for the first time, if this is the first time being with us on our Facebook page for a live all right, we see you. If you've been, if you're on our YouTube channel, okay, or if you happen to be in the webinar room, put a one in the chat. If you are here for the very first time, we want to welcome you. Let you know how you can get involved in this powerful spiritual movement uh, led by Shechem or Shechem. That's the name. Shechem or Shechem is the title of the king of the leader. Uh, all right, welcome, Michelle. And John, John Hamilton, John Music, Terats, Terracita, hope I'm pronouncing that right. Welcome. So glad to see you. You know, we have this course. It's called Ma'at, the 11 Laws of Wealth, Health, and Success. And it is the culmination of 50 years of spiritual research, spiritual practice, um, and the process of educating tens of thousands, probably hundreds of thousands of people around the world um, in how to improve themselves spiritually using the wisdom of our ancient Egyptian ancestors who referred to themselves as Kamo, the people of Kamet. So if you haven't already, what you want to do is definitely download to your device, your cellular device, because this is a mobile accessible course, a meditation course featuring guided meditations, uh, extensive instructions that include breathing, that include mantras, uh, the composition of the comedic meditation script, as well as a guided meditation and access to member only uh, courses. We've had uh, three now, uh, the recordings of which are all in your course, but you need to go to SoundWise, need to get the SoundWise app right in your Google Play Store, in your iOS store. It's a free app. It's called SoundWise. You can see the icon here. Looks like a light bulb with a headset on. It's the orange one. There is another SoundWise. Okay, so you want to get that on your phone. And then you simply search for Ma'at, 
11 laws or you search for comedic legacy and there is there are hours and hours of free webinar information you can get access to tonight. Uh, if you have friends that missed this great uh, webinar that we're going to have tonight, you can get them on that. They can hear the recording of that. That'll be posted. And then you can also go ahead and get started um, in your spiritual elevation by ordering the four powers of your divine spirit, which will give you access to four of the mantras we're going to be talking about tonight, the guided meditations and so on. Uh, and then there's another option where you can get all 11. So make sure you get on over to ma'at11laws.com or go to the Soundwise app, download the app and search for ma'at the 11 laws. All right. So, all right, people are coming in. Good to see you all. All right, we got a lot of people here. People on Facebook, people in the webinar room. This is good news. The good, the good word is yes. Good night, Solomon. He's on our um, YouTube channel there. The good word is spent is spreading. Excellent. So, what a powerful subject. Mantras, words of power. You know, uh, Shechem or Shechem. Ra Unnefer Amen has been uh, teaching about this subject for 50 years now. And some of you on this uh, webinar tonight know him from as the author of Medunitaire Volume 1, powerful information uh, in that book, giving us the words of power. And tonight you're going to be able to hear from him directly. And hopefully at the end, we'll have time for a few questions. Um, so you can actually really get deeply into this subject. So I want to bring to Comedic Legacies platform right now, the founder of the Asar Set Society, the prolific author, and the uh, course creator of Ma'at, the 11 Laws of Health, Wealth, and Success. I just want to make sure you're unmuted here. So join me in welcoming... I think you're muted, sir. Ra Unnefer Amen. We affectionately refer to him, respectively refer to him as the Shechem or Shechem of the Otsaro Set Society. And we greet him with a mantra, actually, ancient comedic mantra that bestows power, peace, and blessings. A Necherak, Shechem or Shechem. And I answer back with a mantra that I give to my audience. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Very good to see you. And uh, hopefully you're doing well in this smoky times. I neglected to introduce you um, as the one who restored the ancient comedic calendar, giving us our understanding of time. And we are uh, right now in the midst of a lot of fire. Uh, in the midst of the Herakuhuti cycle. <laughs> not, not an accident, not a coincidence. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. So Shechem and Shechem, you, you have put together a tremendous course. And in this course, um, you make the statement that part of a major part of the reason why people um, are not able to get it together, misperform, misbehave, uh, don't achieve their goals is because of dormant faculties within the spirit and that you have uh, culminated the knowledge of these mantras that actually empower us to awaken spiritual faculties. So we're excited to hear about this part of the course and an explanation of the great science of mantras. Great. Thank you so much. And Hetepu to the audience, uh, it gives me great pleasure and honor to speak to you this evening, share with you. And the reason that people cannot get things together or do the wrong things, in spite of studying spiritual science, in spite of working very hard to uplift themselves spiritually, it's because the teachings, the spiritual teachings that we need to uplift ourselves, to get our lives together, 
even though they've been around for about four or 5,000 years, have not been properly codified to this date, have not been properly put together, presented together. You see that? And uh, that's why I have written over uh, 20 spiritual books and other 20 books on Qigong and, you know, and Chinese medicine and homeopathy and so forth to, to give people in, a, in, in an orderly manner, you see, that the proper presentation of spirituality. So I would like everybody in the audience to just devote a few seconds to telling themselves, I'm not going to be able to hear you, but say it out loud. There is nothing wrong with me. Mm. You see that? Nothing wrong with me. Say that to yourself. You know, what? We, because what happens is that people use the teaching that they've received, you know, in school, you know, that teaches you how to um, uh, perform something, but not really, not really how to learn it and how to become a super learner when you have the capacity for super learning. But they don't teach that to you in school. They don't help you with that. You know, then you become an adult, you know, and you go out in the world and you are working and you're not making the money you thought and you need to be making and you begin to come down on yourself. But no school, nobody taught you how to make money, how to be successful in the world. So you need to tell yourself there's nothing wrong with me. Mm -hmm. You see that? Osano says we've been around now for almost 50 years. You see that? All over the world. And we've sustained ourselves this long and grown around the world because our teachings work. Our teachings have helped people. May, you and many of the members of Osano said have been in a society for more than 40 years mm -hmm. because you're getting results. And so tonight I want to share a major part of spiritual teachings and the audience will get to see that, you know, they're going to hear, you know, uh, and learn that the knowledge of mantras have not been properly taught. You see that? That's why people are not making the progress that they should be making when they embark on spiritual teachings. You see that? So let me first begin with the most famous mantra, you know, in, in, in the yoga tradition, the mantra Aung, A-U-N-G, Aung. You see that? Which, you know, if you go on the internet, you find it is explained as the, the sound that the universal, undifferentiated, life force makes within you, meaning there's a life force within you. You see, there's an energy force, which is universal. It breaks up into all the different modalities of energy that you need. You see that? But it is the universal force. And like all forces, you see, move, which have movement, they produce sound and color. You see that? Okay. So the, 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 the sound, that if you could hear the sound, the vibration that the universal life force within you makes, it is ong. In ancient Egypt, we say onk instead of ong. You see what they call the, the, the onk cross. It's not a cross. It's just a hieroglyph, a, you know, a, a symbol, graphic symbol for the life force within you. And if we study the symbolism of Kemet, you, we find that there are these rubrics, pictures of Heru, for example, you know, showering or said with, with, with on crosses, therefore resurrecting him. <laughs> That's just simply poetry. That's just like, you know, if I energize myself and raise my life force, I can share it with you. You see that? Okay, if, if I have accrued, a, a, a you know, uh, blessings, you know, I can share them with you. You see that? <clears throat> so the whole thing is that, you know, the mantra on, this universe, the sound that universal life force makes, you know, if, if, if you find it's on, you hear a sound, right? It, it, it's a little whining sound. 
you know, jet, you know, ear, you know, airplanes, you know, that vibration of their propellers and whatever makes sounds. You see that? Okay, so the life force makes sound and different type of sounds have different effects and therefore functions within the body, mind, psyche, and the spirit. You follow me here? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, even my voice, my voice, the sound that we make when we're speaking is the result of, you know, movement, forces moving against, you know, our palate and uh, tongue and, you know, um, all the other parts of our, you know, speech apparatus. You see that? Okay. So what happened is that people have been tied this together for a simple universal mistake. People refer to mantras, right, as words of power. You see that? Meaning they believe that if I chant this word, this chant, like, for example, Ong, or let's say, Nam Yo Harenge Kyo, you know, mm -hmm. the very powerful Japanese Buddhist mantra that has helped many people, that it is the sound that will produce the effect. You see that? Okay? No, if I chant Nam Yo Renge Kyo, the sound is not going to create the effect in my life. The sound is going to energize something within me. You see that? That's going to create that effect. You, you see that? Mm -hmm. Okay? So, um, no, no, don't turn that on, please. Sorry about that, folks. You know, the, the um, sound, okay, is going to energize a certain part of my spirit, a faculty within me, a certain part of my brain, a certain part of my psyche. And these, the mind, the psyche, and the spirit that are energized by the sound, because sound is energy, and everything needs energy through which to function. So the mantra Om is energizing faculties in the spirit, the psyche, the mind, the body, and that is producing the effects. You see that? Okay? Mm -hmm. So we find that the mantra Om, for example, you see, which in, in the Mahat 11 Laws of Health, Wealth, and Success, you know, uh, you know uh, course here, you know, energizes the a faculty of the spirit that we call Amen. You see that? And it's the universal life force. That's why you find, you know, uh, Christians, Jews, and Muslims in the prayer with Amen, Amen, mm. you know, the Iman, and so forth. And or Amun, Pips Amun, Ra, Amen, Ra, and so on, because it's the sound of the universal force, on or Onk, that has been rendered as Amen, mm. you know. And when we say, oh, what does the amen mean? It says, so be it, meaning that's the force that makes it so be it. You see that? Because it engages those faculties. You see that the highest faculties within you. Hmm. Now, so, you know, so let's go back to more a more basic understanding. You see that? So what we call mantras are sound complexes that perform functions. They don't transmit messages. They're not symbolic sounds. If I say to you the word, you know, happiness, that combination of sound is giving a message. You see that I'm, I'm talking to you about some form of joy, happiness. Mm -hmm. But that's the use of sound to convey information. But if I say, on or ser hum, you see that? You know, that sound is doing something. It's creating an effect in your brain, in your spirit, in your psyche, in your mind, and making those faculties bring an effect in your life. You see that? If I chant Nam Yo Renge Kyo, okay, lots of people were not taught that the, 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 the mantra in that phrase is Reng. Mm -hmm. the, the Nam Yo Kyo, Japanese words for, you know, devotion to the lotus of the law, the Dharma. Mm -hmm. The lotus of the Dharma. I mean, the lotus, you know, meaning that, let's say, when you chant that mantra, the reason that it works for some people 
and not for others, is that the people who were devoted, because they weren't explained, they just simply say, chant nam yor, nam yor in the kill. They didn't explain to them what the law is, what the Dharma is. You see that? And the mantra, the ring, will activate faculties within them, which we know is what? The heru faculty. You say heru. Mm -hmm. Ring. You say ring. You know? That part of the, of the, the spirit that awakens, the, the waking centers within us, in the brain and the psyche and so on. So the people who are already living, you know, a pronounced, you know, lawful life, moral life, ethical life, will be benefited by the mantra, you know, nam, you know, nam yo renga kyo. The, and the lots of people say, well, I chanted the mantra, you know, for a hundred times, you know, every day for months and nothing happened. You know, as a matter of fact, in some cases, something bad happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> That's because nothing wrong with you. The, the people that told you to chant the mantra didn't take the time to teach you the law, the ethical and spiritual and moral, you know, uh, activities. They say that the mantra is going to invigorate the faculties for you to live a more, a higher moral life. You see that? Mm -hmm. So that mantra activated the faculty within them to help them live sincerity and ethical and a high moral life. You see that? But the word nam myo renge kyo did not do, did not bring you the wealth, did not bring you the success. It activated a faculty in the mind, the spirit, the psyche, and in the body, in the brain or whatever that brought you the effects that you are looking for only because you have lived the divine law to some degree. You see that? So before I continue to talk about this, let's, let's come back a couple thousand years up to the present. <laughs> you know, one of the things that I have done that has helped my students around the world is to integrate the ancient teachings with the findings of contemporary science. You see that? Lots of people, you know, don't know that thousands of studies have been done in scientific laboratories around the world on the effect that sound has on the biochemistry of our being. You see that? If I repeat the sound, on, 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 you know, in a, in a nice way, on, on, or in a chant, you know, and so on, right? Over and if I repeat that sound over and over and over and again, you see that if I do that, that sound is going to repeatedly awaken and strengthen and uplift because it's giving energy to something within me. You see that it's giving energy to the the, the Sahasra chakra. The Ajna chakra, what they call the so-called third eye, which is not really the third eye, it's really the prefrontal lobe. You see mm -hmm. that? Okay, and this is why it's important to know that the mantra is really engaging a faculty of the spirit, the psyche, the mind, and the body, so that you can bring other, you know, activities into the process. Mm -hmm. So if before I ask, but let's say before I, I turn on, I rotate my eyes. In a, in a counterclockwise direction, you know, slowly rotate the eyes, both eyes up and down and around, up and down while I'm smiling. Smiling is very important, you see that? And in coordination with my breathing, so that I'm breathing from the lower abdomen, if I'm doing that, you see? And then now, if I combine it with chanting, on, 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 then I'm, I'm bringing, the sound is, stimulating the prefrontal lobe of the brain, which is the part of the brain that allows me to think holistically. You see that? the part, of, And that's where unity comes from. My ability to unite with others comes from my ability to think holistically, to have a holistic perception of reality. I cannot have, you see, you cannot teach me to think holistically. That's why lots of people practice Chinese medicine as if it was Western allopathic medicine. You see that? Why? Because they haven't awakened the holistic perceptive 
thinking faculty within them, which we call the Ajna Chakra, the third eye, you know, and so the prefrontal lobe, you got to bring it up to date. Mm -hmm. You see that? So if we perform this so-called, you know, um, you know, a rotation of the eye, exercise of the yogic tradition and things of that nature, okay, then now we will be able to add more fuel to the energy that the mantra own is giving to that Ajna Chakra, to that prefrontal lobe. And, you know, I may not see anything the first day because, you know, it, you know, if I go into the gym and I start to work out every other day to build my biceps, it might be six weeks before I see a bump come up in my arm, you see? <laughs> you see? And that's the other reason why people, you know, they, they, they do a mantra every other day. They're not supposed to be done every day. You see, like at least 21 days straight, consecutive days straight, you know, or every day if you have not a significant result in 21 days. Keep it going. Chant the less than 15 to 30 minutes a day. You see that. You got to repeat that mantra. But you, you need to know what effect you're looking for, and you need to know, you know, what virtue. So if I'm chanting Nam, your Renge Kyo, I must learn the Dharma, the law, meaning the body of virtues of the yogic tradition. You know, non-violence, non-injurious to other people, not lying, not stealing, you know, being sincere. You gotta learn the value, the, the, the virtues, the spiritual values, and live them and understand them. And then now the mantra will help strengthen the faculty in your spirit, mind, psych, and body that will bring about, the, you know, the effect. Psychically, so-called magically or miraculously bring you the wealth, the health, the success that you need. You see, and help you to perform better, you know, socially and in the physical plane. You see? So we have to understand that. Around the world, in many laboratories, they have done studies of how sound, different frequency of sounds, you see that our, our sound envelopes, waveforms, affect, okay, create, you know, caloric energies. And those caloric energies in different waveform formations, you know, produce biochemical effects that, that interact with your hormones, your neurotransmitters, and things of that nature. You know, uh, don't get me wrong. The scientific findings are far from being conclusive, but they're very promising. And the reason that they're far from being conclusive is because the people that have the money needed to fund these studies, they're not interested in studying mantras to help people. They want to study sound, you know, to make weapons. They want to study sound to apply it to things to make money and things of that nature. You see? So we, you know, the spiritual people in this world, what we need to do is to uh, experiment in the laboratory of our own spirit, the laboratory of our own mind, our psyche, our body. And if you are consistent with it, with the right understanding, you see the holistic approach, just don't chant. Learn the virtues, learn the laws, 11 laws, the many virtues, live them. Learn some of the yogic practices like eye rotation exercise. You see that, okay? Um, and things of that nature, deep breathing techniques, you know, eat properly, you know, vegan diet, you know, do your breathing exercises. You have to bring all of these things inside there, you know, and then uh, you will see the effect and, and publish you know, meaning share, do your testimonials, okay, to how these things have helped you. And if you do it consistently, after a couple of years, you will be one of the authors to enlighten the world. Because all the so-called great sages, you know, they got to that level of sages by the daily practice of these teachings. You see that? You know, you're a basketball player. You just do not succeed through your talent. You got to strengthen your legs. You got to exercise to strengthen your arms, to strengthen your cardiovascular ability, your stamina. You see that. You have to also do things to keep your mind sharp because your most important basketball tool 
is your brain. You see that? Okay, so you have to you have to cultivate all of these things to be a good basketball player, a good football player, just not the one thing. And that's the mistake that people make. They just simply chant the mantra. They think that if I just chant this mantra 108 times or 1,080 times or 100, you know, 8,000 times, that I am going to get the results I'm looking for. No, every mantra activates a particular part of the spirit, mind, psych, and the physical body. You need to know what they do so that you can bring in the other part of the course, the other part of, you know, the the um, the, the, the project that you have to, to do to achieve your goals. That's why this course that we are presenting to the world right now, it's called, you know, Ma'at 11 Laws, you know, of health, wealth, and success, meaning that your spirit has 11 faculties in it. You see that? Your psyche has 10 faculties in it. So the 11 plus the 10, meaning that there are 21 or 22 in another, another tradition, the Kabbalistic tradition, the, the Hebrew letters of Kabbalah, each letter symbolizes, you know, a truth of, you know, a part of the spirit and a part of the psyche. The same thing with the Chinese, you know, um, Bagua, you know, improperly called Bagua because Bagua means the eight kwa, okay, but they're really ten kwa, not eight, uh, you know, and th then now you have the 12, you know, uh, branches, okay, so you have right there 22. So the the the, the um, Chinese system of, of, of 10 elements, the, let's say five elements, was really 10. Five yin and five yang, and then you have the 12 branches, so that's 22, which parallels the 22 Hebrew letters of Kabbalah, and in our tradition, the 11 laws, the 11 parts of the spirit, and then the 10 parts of your psyche. You see, your body, your physical body has a fixed number of, of, uh, of um, parts. Your body doesn't have more parts than my body. You don't have more bones than I do. You don't have more organs than I do. Okay, except, I mean, if we're both normal, we have the same amount of parts in our body. Your spirit is a body. It has 11 parts to it. Your psyche is a body. It has 10 major parts to it. And of course, you can, there are many sub parts or whatever. And this is the genius of ancient spiritual teachings that they were able to identify the fixed number of parts that make up the spirit and make up the psyche. You see that? Just not simply the number, but what they are, what's the vibration rate, and things of that nature. You see that? The same way that Johann Sebastian Bach was able to identify the 12 chromatic scale of a well-tempered scale to make the wonderful music of the Western world, okay, the ancients were able to find out, you know, what are the different keys that make this wonderful thing called the spirit and the psyche and the mind to do its wonderful job in the world and to fix it when it's not doing it and to uplift it when we need more power. You see that? And so on. So with this, I'm going to make, take a pause to allow you to ask some questions. Wonderful, wonderful. So again, if you're just joining us, this is Shechem or Shechem, Ra Unefer Amen. We are on the Committed Legacy channel talking about Ma'at, the 11 Laws of Health, Wealth, and Success, a new on-demand course that all of you should uh, well advise to take. And tonight we're talking about mantras, the use of mantras. So while we're waiting for some questions here, Shechem or Shechem, way back in uh, in your first, um, not your first book, but many people would look at it as your first book, Meduna Ter, Volume 1, you had a section on the light of the East, which I thought was so powerful because when you introduced the people chanting Om, you know, a lot of people's image in their mind is in, is in India, you know, it's an Indian practice or what have you. Um, can you just refresh for those of us that might have missed the very beginning how this mantra relates to ancient Kemet. Yeah. First of all, let me say something to you, right? When you chant on the right way, right? Yeah. You are 
breathing from the lower abdomen. Okay, you're supposed to be breathing from the lower abdomen, and you're saying, um, and you're pulling in the lower abdomen, pressing against your vagus nerve, right? So if you're chanting on the top of your throat, you're not going to get anything, mm. right? So you're chanting om, om, and you're pulling in the lower abdomen. You breathe in, pushing out the lower abdomen, and you are pulling it in all the way back, yet gently, as you're chanting om. And if you chant on or onk, onk, as a committing, commit is onk, Mm -hmm. Because K in one language relates to G in another language. Mm -hmm. Look that up in your dictionaries, in your online encyclopedias. You see that? So in Indus Kush, the black people in Indus Kush, they said on with a K, with a G. Mm -hmm. You see that? In Kami, we say onk with a K. You see that? So is it... The root of the mantra is A U O. It's an O. So what is the NG? You see that? The NG, the, the, the yoga is, is the Anushvara hmm. or the Anushswara. You see that? Okay? And there's a lot of cryptic talk about this mysterious Anukshara, you see, or Anushvara. You see that? And if you find, you know, what's the, the symbol for the Anushvara is an N. Meaning the mantra is O, A, U, and an M with a little circle on top of it. Mm-hmm. You see that? So it's an OM, that's an A, U, M with a little circle on it. What does that M with a circle stand for? It sounds for the song, oh, the nasal, oh, right? You see that? Mm-hmm. So that circle above the M. Is the loop on top of the so-called on cross? Mm. You see that? Too. So what does that anushvara or the circle above the, the cross in the on correspond to? It, it corresponds to the hum that you see that we use when we're singing. Mm. When we're singing or working, the ing is action. I am working. Mm. Living, mm. it's a singing, meaning it's the ng. Mm. You see that? Mm-hmm. If, I, if I say oh, I'm not producing anything. But if, and if I say um, the, the m sound, I'm not producing the right effect. It has to be on um, a nasal mm. ng, which is what a humming. So if I if I just hummed instead of saying on. Um, I will get the same effect. Mm-hmm. And when you come to the study of the body, the vagus nerve, how it invigorates the entire nervous system, and all, and through that, every single cell in your body. You see that? You can awaken the vagus nerve by humming, provided that you're breathing the right way when you hum. You, you, you with me? Very interesting, because in in many um, African and Oriental languages, when you hear them singing, even you hear that very nasal sound. It's not common in English. Yeah, the young lady girls when they're singing in in African ceremonies, Mm -hmm. it's a very nasal thing, because that's how they're activating. Mm -hmm. So in a onk, which is not a word but a symbol for this that humming sound, that nasal sound. Anushvara, oh, you see that? And now, um, it's not a u m, because that m has a circle on. It's same, but like in, in, if I put two two dots above an a, or a bar above an a, it's different from just a naked a, a simple a. You see that? Mm-hmm. So that's what the that little circle, the anushvara, was all about. Because swara means what breath. Mm-hmm. So make the breath nasal. You know, I meaning combine the breath, the nasals part of your with making the sound mm-hmm. are you with me here with it yes yeah great so we do have a question from sahira ma'at she says should the mantras be chanted silently or out loud or both which will be more effective well once you are chanting the right way both of them are effective okay 
I will use both forms. Of course, if you chant out loud, you will have to adopt a different uh, breathing pattern because you cannot, you cannot chant out loud on the in-breath. You chant out, so if I say Om Ham Kishan, I can chant Om Ham Kishan, Om Ham on the in-breath and the out-breath mentally, right? We're gonna shout out loud and have to say oh, oh, pause and breathe in. And on the out breath, oh, oh, pause, breathe in, right? So I adopt that strategy with me. Okay, so that's effective and very useful. Okay, mm -hmm. and it has a very powerful effect on, on the on, on enlightening the physiological apparatus. You're with me, but mental chanting has a stronger effect on the mind and the psyche. You mm -hmm. see that? Somebody might want to say, well, why don't you put that in the, in, in the course? But I, 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 I'm putting it in there now. I don't, you know, there's so much information that applies to this that if I try to put everything up front, the student will be overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. You see that? The student will not know what to focus on, you know, in the, in the proper sequence. That's why we're having, you know, uh, many webinars to assist the student that get this course to, you know, to expand their understanding of the course and of life. You see that? Mm-hmm. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. And um, Shayesta, uh -huh. Shep Shep Sherry, is this also why Ifa practitioners say Asheo? Well, Asheo. You know, if you if you're saying that the oh, you have to be contracting your abdomen. So if you say I say oh, and it's up in the throat here, yeah, it's not doing anything. You can understand how the body, uh, how the, the people say oh, you know, body, spirit, mind, all one, they're not separate. But you got to know how to connect them. Mm -hmm. So if I say show, oh, I'm putting the lower abdomen. You see? Mm -hmm. If I say I show oh, up here, you know, the sun is up here. You know, I'm not doing anything. You see that? You find that many singers are long lived and have very good health because good singers sing from the lower abdomen. Mm -hmm. You see that? So Osar Tamar says, do you have any advice for deciphering the pronunciation of the mantras you give us in the Meduna Tear? When he said to decipher, at this point, um, I want people to focus on the affirmations that go with the mantra. You see that? The affirmations, you know, indicate, you know, the, the, the meaning of the mantras, the purpose of the mantra. You see that? When I chant Om Han Kashang, you know, that is, you know, it, it, in other words, you see, because the mantras are not tools of information. They are tools of action. They, are, they, 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 they produce effects. So it's important that you think about the effects that they produce as opposed to trying to decipher them into a, 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 a set of information units. But then you're restricting your understanding. Uh, you, you follow what I'm saying? Meaning that when I'm dealing with an action tool, it's, it's much more. I cannot capture the wholeness and I might distort it by, you follow what I'm saying? If I try to own, for example, or onk, I'm awakening the holistic, the ability to perceive holistically. You see that? That's why, you know, the, the so-called third eye, the eye is really a symbol for perception, for holistic perception. You see that? But when they put that eye on the dollar, they call it the all-seeing eye, meaning it is holistic seeing, holistic perception. You see that? And when I have holistic perception, then I can unify things, you know? I can unify the past, present, and future. You see that? Not only, you know, in terms of my uh, intellectual perception, but in my psychic perception, they call that what? Clairvoyance. So all of those things, once you start to decipher and limit the mantra to some definition, you are going to shut your mind down to all of the revelations that working with the mantra will bring to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the uh, part of his question about proper pronunciation is one of the great benefits of the course. Is, is it not the... Um... Well, yeah, you have a, the, the course gives you the actual rec recording of the actual chants. Mm -hmm. So you get, you know, 
an understanding of how, an example of how to properly pronounce the mantra. You see that? Okay. And, and on that note, Shekham Shekham, you compose the music. Some people on here um, may just be meeting you for the first time and not aware that you were a, uh, a tremendously trained uh, pianist and uh, musician that actually uh, devoted your musical talent to spirituality. Can you speak a little bit about how you were able to recover the, the, the proper melodies um, that you that you're using in the mantras that are in the course. Yeah, well, you know, I, I was a, a student of music, right? Scholarship student of music, a minor scholarship music, piano major, you know, a theory minor. Studied the, the Schenkerian system of of uh, music analysis. You see. And, and, I, and I learned how to compose music. I'm also a composer. But in this mantric chance, I did not use any theory at all. I would just simply, you know, begin chanting the mantra, you know, uh, <clears throat> prosaically, not that musically, just repeating the mantra with the breathing. And along the way, the melody began to attach itself, hmm. to attach itself and come. You see that? And then I would sit at the piano, and play it, I'm going to trance, you know? And <laughs> that's how all of those mantras were composed. You see that? The same thing with the military oracle cards. I chanted the mantra of Oset, mm -hmm. you know, Om Vang Du Hung, you know, um, for many, many hours. And I stayed in trance for 11 hours. Yeah, that's when the, 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 the military oracle came down. Mm. Me chanting and being in trance for 11 hours straight. You see that, okay? People say, "How long should I chant?" Well, my question is, you know, um, how soon do you want to get to heaven? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the Beatles have a song. I really want to meet him. You know? right, I, really, right. I really want to meet him. You know, <laughs> if you really want to meet the divine within you, then devote more time to. You know, you can sit and chant the mantra for an hour, two hours. Do you a lot of good. <laughs> So, Ebank uh, Neter <clears throat> Osura, I didn't put your question up, but you see, Shekham Shekham heard you. Now, he was asking about the Hare Krishna mantra, <laughs> and you mentioned the song. What yeah, you, but the, 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 the Hare, 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 right? Mm -hmm. Hare, Hare. And that's the mantra there, right? Krishna is also a mantra, the Kriya mantra, the mantra, the Kriya, you know, function within you. This is a, which is the action form of yoga, of destiny, you know? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so when you chant Hari, that's the Heru mantra. Heru, Hari, Hurrah, you know? Mm -hmm. You see that? That, you know, w when, when a lion or a tiger is about to pounce on you, what do they do? They growl, right? They're chanting their mantra to, to, to invigor themselves. <clears throat> you know, that they roll that R, you know? They're chanting. They get into the warrior. The warrior, you know, those words, you know, mm -hmm. war, mm -hmm. you know, they're getting to that warrior mode by chanting, invigorating that has look with the faculty within them. Yes. See that. Yeah. So great. We have new people. They, they, they need, we need to catch them up to speed. So Kisa Hatep said at one time the chants were available on tape. You remember those days? It was actually tape. Some of y'all too, maybe too young to remember tape. <laughs> but um, now, they're available on the SoundWise app on our course. So that's how you can get them. And, and Shekma Shekham, you, you took the time to really um, advance what was given when you were selling the, um, you were offering to the public the mantras in your CDs and uh, there were instructions and things of that nature. But when it came to now the digital format, um, you expanded it much further beyond that, didn't you? Yeah, because it's the, the the thing you know, as as years pass, right? You know, you learn how to reach the audience better. You learn more about what the audience needs. You see that, and that 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 comes with time and working with the people over fifty years. You know, so the way we package these mantras now is in response and on learning and understanding how people learn best, 
we see that what they need more. So each module, each each you know the the module eleven laws has eleven modules. Each module you know uh, helps you to to nurture and cultivate you know one of the eleven parts of your spirit. We see that mm -hmm. it has its own mantra, full explanation of what that mantra is, what that part of the spirit is, what it does, along with you know affirmations to help you understand you know the behavior the way you should be thinking and the way you should be imagining and the way you should be acting, as well as, you know, in vi uh, visualizing the mundane blessing that, you know, living a spiritual life will con confer upon you. You see that? And that's important because, you know, uh, people have said that disconnected, the, uh, the, the worldly blessings, they've separated it from the spiritual work. And many of us have got, become disgusted by people who um, use their spiritual, you know, uh, tools or teachings to make money. Of, you know, send me the money and I, I want to bless you. <laughs> and they're mm -hmm. taking money from people in that way. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, so some people try to disconnect their spiritual work from their mundane needs. No, they go together. You see that? Look at this universe. The universe, look at how many galaxies and star systems out there. Go out and look at nature. Nature is so rich. God has given you riches. God has made you to enjoy life, to have a good life. To, but you have to be God-like to mm -hmm. have it. You see that? Nothing wrong with you wanting a decent place to, to live. You see that? to have a, a good society, a good family. That's important. But the thing is, is that you want to, you want to approach getting the things of this world in a manner that does not destroy your spirituality, that does not compromise your spirituality. You see that? That mm -hmm. does not enslave you to the things that you want. You see, some people want a car and they can become so enslaved in wanting a car because they don't know how to use a spiritual you know, part of their being, the positive side of the psyche, to get that car. So they end up enslaving themselves to material things. And that's what this, this, this course here will keep you from doing, help you to get the things that you need in life without becoming a slave to them. You see that? So that it helps you to transmute desires, which is of the psyche, the lower part of being, into spirit, spiritual aspirations, which is the higher part of your being. That's the, this, that's the law of alchemy, mm -hmm. transforming desire into aspirations. Because the desire is the fire of the lower part of being, and the aspiration is a spirit, aspiration mm -hmm. of the higher part of being. All right. This, I'm so glad this is being recorded because I want to stop and take notes. I know y'all are catching these jewels. And thank you, Kisa, for bringing that um, question up, because some people I've run into have even said, oh, I have the mantras already. I don't need to get the course. You know, they think it's the same thing. But in the course, you you wed the whole process of the mantras, as you said earlier, with the recitation of the appropriate affirmation of the law and in, yeah. in the script. Yeah. In other words, it's a, the, the, the mantra is a tool. That can be used for, in, in so many different ways. And that's what the course does. The course gives you a baseline, you know, uh, instruction on how to use the mantras, you know, to, to begin to solidify your spirituality. You see that? Okay. Uh, for example, you know, uh, I could have a course sometime later on this year on how to use the Amen mantra to awaken and develop your holistic thinking ability. Okay, which is not done in any other course that I've given. So you got to understand that the mantra has multiple approaches, multiple uses. Mm -hmm. And people, on, people think, oh, the mantra does one thing. No, the mantra does a lot of different things according to how you package it. You see that? The mantra is just simply a tool, part of, you see that? In other words, <clears throat> you know, if, if I, let me see how can I best explain it. In other words, uh, you can buy a battery that can be used, you know, in a flashlight, in a radio, in a TV, different appliance. You're with me. 
So that, that's what the mantra is. It's a tool for different uses. You see that? Mm -hmm. So if I teach you how to use the Amen mantra, the Ong, the Ong mantra, right? You learn how to chant it, but you have to learn all of its uses. You see? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Haras Howard said, Can a, could a mantra produce a negative effect? Well, the mantras that we are teaching that we provided in this course cannot produce a, a negative effect because they're on this, they operate on the level of spirit. You see that? You can find books out there that have mantras that work more so with the psych. You see that? And what, the, you know, in, in the, some of the, the uh, Buddhist system, the so-called uh, black hat sect of Buddhism, where there's a left hand pass and mm -hmm. so forth. So they use mantras that you should definitely stay away from. It's nothing else about using <clears throat> energy in the right way, the wrong way. Mm -hmm. And then there's also toxic energy as well. You see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So on that theme, Robert uh, says, would, we, would you recommend a beginning mantra which we could practice basic technique slash understanding? Well, uh, there's no such thing as a beginning mantra. Okay. In other words, you know, um, this course here will teach you how to use you know, all the basic mantras that you need, 11, the, the, the 11 faculties of the spirit. You see that? <clears throat> when you talk about a beginning, that's what this course is. There are more elaborate initiation courses that will take it even further. You with me? So uh, the, 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 on this course, the 11 laws, we call it not the 11 laws of health, wealth, and success. We call it a beginning, but the the, the Instructions will take, you know, a very advanced student places that he or she never dreamt of going. Mm -hmm. You see that? Meaning that the, the, the materials is easy to understand, but extremely wide in its application and the goods that it can deliver. Mm -hmm. You see that? <clears throat> you master all 11 laws and or even less of them and you could become a millionaire, a billionaire even, or a genius in, in, in physics, because it's, it's going to awaken all the faculties of your mind and your psyche. These mantras here that we're talking about is what I use to write the over 45 books that I've written in 50 years, mm -hmm. the over 100 meditation compositions. You see that? Books in different kinds of sources. You see different types of subjects. You see that Kemetic, spirituality, Qigong, I've been creating my own Qigong system, brought an orchid into the world, the I Ching, several I Ching books, okay, uh, and so on, okay, music uh, theories and things of that nature by awakening different parts of my psyche. You see that? I have a book of Medunity Volume 6 where there's 72 mantras for, you know, um, identifying over 200 life applications and once you understand that you will find that these mantras can be used for just any and every event that comes into your life some of these mantras have been used by political prisoners to be released from jail you see that and to help people wrongly you know uh, incarcerated to uh, escape you know um jail, you know, unjust jail sentences and things of that nature. You see it? Mm -hmm. So combining a couple of questions that you just touched on, Shechem and Shechem, um, in Medunite of Volume 6, you gave the 72 um, mantras. Uh, in your Qigong books, you gave healing sounds for the different organs. And in Light on Kundalini Yoga, you also correlated mantras with the chakra system. Um, how would you how would you prioritize for people that, well, people that are new or people that have just been reading but not applying the significance of the of the mantras that you're using in the course and where they will progress from there? Well, to, the way to start is not to focus on mantras. Mantra is just simply one of the the many things 
tools that we use to improve our lives. You see that? Okay. In other words, my art, the lemon laws of health, wealth, and success. I have a health project. I want to heal myself. I want to improve my health. You see that? So what I need to do is I need to learn to be, I need to cultivate, you know, a peaceful response to life challenges. What's going to help me to do that? Thinking in a manner in, according to the, the law of, of that part, the part of my spirit that governs my ability to be at peace. Visualizing my person responding spiritually to life challenges. Visualizing the blessing that I want, which is healing. You see that? Okay, awakening that faculty that will enable me to heal, that, that, that amen faculty, which I'm gonna awaken with the mantra. You see that? Mm -hmm. So do not let the, I want to work with mantras be the leader. Let your life projects be the leader. You see that? Okay, I, I need to get a better job. Okay, so um, let's, Learn the amen law to see what amen violation you are engaged in that's keeping you from getting a better job. Learn the oser violation that's keeping you from getting that better job. You follow what I'm saying? Meaning, yeah, meaning that maybe you, you, you're not uniting properly with people. You see that? Okay. Learn the tehute law that will awaken your inner intuitive guide within you. You see that? Okay? That will lead you to understanding what you need to correct to get that job. And, you know, so do not say, oh, I want to learn mantras or I want to learn breathing. I want, you know, this course here will teach you the mantras, will teach you the breathing techniques, will teach you the way to think and to visualize to achieve your goals. So approach it. You know, how can I uplift myself spiritually and ethically to activate my spiritual and psychical abilities to miraculously or magically achieve my goals. You see that? When I say miraculously and magically, is that, you see, in life you'll find that you've received many things you didn't ask for, that you didn't work for. They just happen. But that's your spirit and your psych making that happen. You see that? So when you want to get a career, you just don't go to school to learn something. You have to activate your psych, your mind, and your spirit to assist in the process. Thank you so much. And Dwayne Comer says, while in trance, using, the cert using certain chants, do I keep concentrating on the chants or do I let the breathing take over and listen? Okay, he went wild and trance using certain chants. Do I keep concentrating on the chants or do I? Well, you see, when you're working with the guided part of the meditation, the, the, the recording, right? The, the, the first six, seven, eight minutes, you're chanting. We're going to trance. You see that? Then now there's an instruction that comes and tells you now it's now time for you to work on your meditation script, right? Mm -hmm. So you're gonna go through those four steps. So you're gonna visualize, you know, the situation that triggers a negative response. But this time you're gonna think, you're gonna affirm the law, visualize your person enjoying living the law and visualize your person enjoying receiving a, world, a, a worldly blessing. And you repeat those four items over and over and over and over. That act of visualization will keep you in trance, will strengthen the trance. You see that? That's what you do. You see that? Okay? Then if at some point you find that you've repeated, you know, the, the, the meditation script enough times, 10, 12 times, you can then continue to chant mentally with the breathing as you've learned and so on. You see that? So the, 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 um, Recording gives you the model, you know, gives you the 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 uh, the platform, you see, that you need to uh, work with. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And let's see. This sounds like uh, 
course member, what if you struggle to visualize and just see black? Well, if you, in other words, when you go into trance, you are in a dreamlike state, right? So at some point, at some point, your um, your visions will become, you know, are uh, you know more vivid. You see that? So if that doesn't happen, my question is maybe you need to chant longer. You know, maybe you need to go back and look at your breathing. Maybe there's too much tension in your breathing, or maybe you are desiring too hard. You know. To, to see things clearly. You see that? So I would recommend if that's happening to you, okay, um, do the breathing while you've been instructed and when you're told to uh, not work in your script, you know, uh, see working in your script. If you, you know, if you don't get images, just keep working on the script. You follow what I'm saying? Okay, and uh, visualize and repeat it in your mind you see that, and you know, eventually it will clear up. You will get a clear image out of the blue one of these days. You see that, but you know, you might need to check on your breathing. But that's that's usually the number one of uh, uh, cause of uh, meditation pro uh, problems. You see that maybe you're contracting the abdomen too much, or you're not contracting it at all or enough. You see, yeah. When you're breathing in, the other man goes out. Make sure you're not pressing too hard on the end of the in breath. Don't press too hard on the end of the out breath. You know, so go over and and check those things out. I can testify to that, Sheikh Meshekam. Don't feel bad if people around you are giving you Technicolor reports and you're. Just, well, let, you're well, let me say something to you, right? Seeing black, right? That's the inner black hole. So if you're mm -hmm. seeing black you're seeing the right thing. Hmm. You see that? Meaning that, that that's the inner black hole. Okay? Hmm. All right? So don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. You see, what you got to what you have to, what you have to be concerned if if you are meditating now for 10, 12 minutes and you have a lot of mental chatter going on. That's not a good sign. That means you're not breathing properly. But if you're seeing black, that's the inner black hole in the right place. Hmm. One day you come out on the other side of that hole, illuminated. Mm. Yeah. So uh, again, I want to welcome new people to the broadcast. We're talking about mantras tonight with Ra Unefra Men, the prolific author and spiritual leader, 50 years of experience in meditating and teaching meditation and using mantras, which he has credited to uh, his massive amount of accomplishments as an author, as a teacher, a scholar, and a um, and a music musical composer. So I want to welcome you, Francine. If you're not in the course, let me just take a moment here and let you know what you want to do is you want to go to Soundwise. Uh, just download the app on your phone. It's called Soundwise. This is what it looks like. And then just search for comedic legacy or search for Ma'at. That's easier. M-A-A-T. And you'll see Ma'at, the 11 laws course come up. And the simplest way to get into the course is to start with the four powers of your divine spirit. That is Amen, Oser, Tehuti, and Seker. And then you can continue as you develop your knowledge to get the rest of the course. Or if you know you want the whole thing, uh, you can get the entire 11 faculties for a discounted price that you'll see on the website. Um, if you're not able to get to it on your phone, then you can go to www.maat11laws.com. Maat11, the number 11, laws.com. Um, Shechem, Shechem, we had a question. I can't find it at the moment about the psych. You've been making reference to the psych. Can you just clarify for people that are not um, precise on that term, what you mean by the psych? Yeah, well, the, the psych is the lower spiritual part of your being, right? The psych is where uh, the instincts come from. You know, the, the human desires, the human perspective, the human 
you know, impulses come from the psyche. You see, meaning that, you know, and the, and the human type responses. So if I'm challenged and I'm responding with, with fight, flight, you know, re response, I'm being influenced by the psyche. If instead I'm responding in a peaceful manner, in a divine way, then I'm coming from the spirit. The spirit is a, high, is a higher, you know, source of, you know, of, of reactions in life. Actions in life is a spirit. The psyche is what psychologists, psychologists study. You see that? Your human behavior. And unfortunately, lots of people, you know, are confused psychical impulses with spiritual realities. You know, when the brother wrote the song about, you know, sexual healing, you see that? Um, people thought that that was something spiritual. No, it's psychical. Mm -hmm. You see that? Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, healing, spiritual healing comes from, you know, uh, cultivation of your divinity. You see that? And that's going to be my, ne my, my next course is going to be Kinemit on Ket, on Ket, the healing power of love. You see that? Which has nothing to do with sex, is way above, has to do with the ability to give, seek, and nothing in return. So the, the psyche is the part of you that is the source of instinctive behavior, which is what psychologists study. Thank you for that. So we are um, running up against the hour, just so that you know, um, Shekham Shekham. Someone did ask, you, you gave us a powerful technique about the eye rotations. This recording will be uh, available if you're on Facebook. Um, the recording will stay there. If you're on our YouTube channel, it will stay there. And um, you will also be able to get to it at ma'at11laws.com. So you can go back and review. Um, and let's see. So uh, Shekham Shekham, did you have any closing remarks or uh, summarization you want to give? Yeah, I just want to reinforce the message that <clears throat> this, this meeting here was about mantras, right? But it's important not to focus, you know, solely or primarily on the mantra. You see that? Just one tool of many. You see that? You need the proper breathing. You need the mantras. As a matter of fact, you know, you can awaken the faculties without the use of mantras. You see that? Um, just that it will take longer. You see? Meaning that if, if, if I am making an effort to memorize the uh, affirmations and, and, and connect them to the triggers, the trigger events, I'm creating a demand, therefore, to visualize and, and think those laws, it would take longer without mantras, but it can happen without mantras. You see that? So do not focus on the mantras themselves. You know, use all, in other words, the, the, um, the affirmations of the law. The course, the name of the course is Ma'at the 11 laws. It's not Ma'at the 11 mantras. You see that? Ma'at the 11 laws. So the affirmation of the law, thinking about the law, visualizing, living the law, and visualizing a mundane blessing from being living a divine life is even much more important than working with the mantras. Yeah? Work on the mantras if you want something in 10 days instead of, let's say, a 1,000 days, okay, which is very useful. I think we can all benefit from shortening, you know, um, the, the, the goalpost. Yes, sir. So that's what you have to have the proper perspective. And it comes, you know, the confusion comes from not being, the information not being codified properly over the past 5,000 years. So if you find yourself struggling with your spirituality, with your conduct and achieving things, you know, let's end this session by you saying to yourself, there's nothing wrong with me. There's nothing wrong with you, my beloved. Nothing is wrong with you. You have not been taught properly. And this is what we want to correct. Give you the proper education, the proper information, you know, uh, help you to benefit 
from the 50 years of our experience teaching people around the world. Peace and blessings and love to all of you. Thank you so much, Shekhar Meshachim, for spending this time uh, with us and for your tremendous work over all of these years. And as somebody that's had the um, good fortune to be in your company for four decades now and work with these monsters, I would definitely recommend any of you hearing this. Um, it, it, it's life changing, truly life changing. So we want to greet Shekhar Meshachim with a mantra of empowerment, vitality continued health and success so that he can continue to bless the world. So, Anecharak, Shekham Shekham Ra'unefa, Amen. Before I answer, I want to clarify that Harak. That Harak is the mantra that gave the word hurricane. Hurakan. <laughs> you see that? Meaning that the, the subtle natural force, that fire, that electricity that works in a lightning strike, thunder, you know, the hurricane, you see, it makes that sound, rock, you see that? So, uh, so you got to understand that many of the mantras come from, you know, there are really natural forces that have been objectified in the tradition. So we need to have a proper understanding of these mantras and what they are. And one of these days, you know, there will be a great understanding. What we need is to get thousands of people using the laboratory of their spirit, mind, psych, and body, you see, in the studying of these very powerful ancient techniques. They've been around for thousands of years, you see, not the hundred year or less, of modern contemporary science and physics. You see that? And the truth will only come from individuals like me and you, because the people that would otherwise study it, they are not going to devote money to studying things that will not make money for them. You see that? But we are here to, to uplift the world, to help save the world from itself. You see that? So, Rakatepu, all of you. All right, that's a rock. Yes, sir. All right, peace and blessings, everyone. Have a great evening. And if you're brand new to the course, let me just make sure you have the proper information. You can get started right away. Yes, someone asked the question. It is on demand. You can be meditating tonight with this powerful course. Uh, you can be doing the work on building your meditation script. Each module comes with complete instructions on the divine law that governs that faculty of the spirit. And it guides you into how to formulate your meditation process. All you have to do is go over to ma'at11laws.com and click on the button for the Ma'at 11 Laws of Health, Wealth, and Success class. And you can sign up right there. So once again, thank you. Have a great evening. And we'll see you again soon. Hetapu.